For such young fiction, Star Citizen has incredibly deep lore. And one of, albeit most likely the greatest, draws to Star Citizen are the ships. Their fully realized designs and unique characteristics make them alluring to any sci-fi fan. Apart from each ship, each manufacturer has a fully detailed backstory, design language, and company philosophy that exists in the fiction. These identifiers are reliably represented across all ships. This video series will take you through the design language, history, ship selection, and odd quirks of each of the major ship producers of Star Citizen. If you would like to stay up to date with the rest of the series, subscribe to this channel. If you already have, well, I'd like to thank you for sticking with Space Tomato and for coming to this tomato talk. For the majority of its long history, Aegis Dynamics almost exclusively was a supplier of mainly military ships. It was founded from a merger between Earth-based Aegis macrocomputing and Davian-based dynamic production systems with the explicit goal of constructing a naval spacecraft. It is one of the oldest manufacturers having created spacecraft for hundreds of years. The firm was favored by oppressive dictator Ivor Messer, and thus found great success under his regime. The Aegis brand became synonymous with the ruthless, oppressive regime during the Messer era. After the fall of the Imperator in 2792, most of Aegis military contracts were stripped, and the company was headed for bankruptcy. At this point, Aegis aircraft were being adopted for civilians, repurposed for non-military uses because they were so well made and reliable. Civilians said, why not? Aegis saw the potential here and quickly redirected, softening its image and focusing on civilian variants for their current generation designs. They were able to use their vast array of ships to offer solutions for almost any type of customer, the fighter, the bounty hunter, the espionage, salvager, the fuel rat, e-war pilot, and even cargo and passenger transport. That's not to say the ships don't still have a military edge. Almost all Aegis ships appear to have a military design reminiscent of current day ships. Take a look at the Eclipse or the Gladius. Both look much like a military ship you might even see today. The overall Aegis design is very streamlined. It is smooth curves and hard lines, lending to a sleek look across almost all ships. Most of the ships have a very space plane look to them. Even the boxier models in the Aegis portfolio just have a more refined look. They're sexy boxes. From the largest destroyer class ships down to the single seat E-War fighters, Aegis has a wide selection of ships that all find a way to look like they are from the same company. And trust me when I say, there are a lot of ships. Now there's one obvious standout considering ship styling when you put it next to the rest of the Aegis ships, and that is the Reclaimer. Reclaimers are heavy-duty salvage ships designed for a strong support role. The design isn't that pretty to look at, but it features a variety of rugged specialized tools, all designed for operation in a combat theater. Long-range jump drives, launch pads for drones, tractor beams, floodlights, turrets, and more. It's an incredibly industrial looking ship and it has a lot of similarities with ships you might see in the Alien universe. The Starfarer Gemini is also a bit of an odd one out. While manufactured by MISC, the Starfarer Gemini is actually sold under the Aegis Dynamics brand, making it quite a standout compared to the rest of the lineup, which with that context makes sense. Aegis does a great job of providing traditional styling with a futuristic edge. It also offers a ton of ships to choose from. The Gladius is an obvious starter for a beginner who's looking to shoot up some pirates. 
the Avenger is a standout contender for the best starter jack of all trades. The Eclipse and Retaliator are great at blowing things up, and the Hammerhead can project a massive amount of control over an area of space. Into more civilian work? Grab a Vulcan and help your fellow citizens in need. And if you're thinking you want to lead a company or start an organization, well, what better command and control ship is there besides the Idris? Oh, the Idris. The Frigate class Idris is joined by the Destroyer class Javelin as Aegis Dynamics' big gun contributions to the UEE. And even in these massive ships, both interior and exterior, you can see how the strong, pronounced military styling that you can find in almost all Aegis ships carries over. The bridge looks like something you might see in a modern day Navy ship. The hallways have no unnecessary frills or embellishments, and the shape and design of the exterior is very aggressive and in your face. But they still sell to civilians, because Aegis is a family company now. <laughs> if you're looking for a ship that comes with a solid selection of components, a healthy offering of armor or weapons, and quite honestly, a design that won't stand out as being too fancy, or pretty, or too ugly, Aegis Dynamics will almost certainly have something for you. It's an old company that aged like a vintage port, and each ship is now just an invite for you to pop the core. If Aegis Dynamics is the old man who struggled through a midlife crisis only to come out of it better than he went in, then Anvil Aerospace is his firstborn son, ready to take over the company and trailblaze a new path aiming for the stars. Well, different stars. Founded in 2772, Anvil has been reliably delivering military-grade equipment to the UEE Navy for almost two centuries. It was one of the first Terran success stories and still maintains its headquarters on Terra to this day. It was a strong competitor to the heavily Messer-backed Aegis Dynamics, both in its creations and in what it stands for, being a Terra-based company. For those who don't know, there is a monumental amount of support in the Star Citizen Galaxy for the center of humanity to be shifted from the tainted and old seat on Earth to the newer, more progressive, and more central location of Terra. As you can imagine, this clashing of beliefs permeates into all areas of human existence. The company always has been and continues to be very laser focused on the vision of its leader. For the first 70 odd years of Anvil's existence, every design project was personally led by company founder J. Harris Arnold. And while Anvil has factories on three dozen UEE core worlds, it continues to source all systems itself and requires that the standing CEO sign off on every spacecraft alteration. Anvil's civilian line of craft is relatively new. The idea of providing civilian crafts was controversial throughout the company, and an argument was made that the military aspect of the Anvil brand would be diluted. The back and forth over the matter wouldn't matter, however, when the UEE government stepped into the debate with a surprising resolution. They actually favored the concept of supplying military-styled weaponry to civilians especially on the distant frontiers. Thus, Anvil went through the painstaking process of civilianizing various ships. Surprisingly, or maybe not so much, profits skyrocketed, and doubly so, the brand was not tarnished, but rather, these new military civilian ships were seen as a status symbol, rendering the popular Hornet as a luxury ship. Anvil continues to this day to produce many beloved ships, including the recently released Carrick, arguably the most highly anticipated ship to Star Citizen fans. From the large Carrick down to the small Arrow or Pisces, Anvil retains its position as a top-selling brand. On the civilian side, the Hornet is holding steady as the third best-selling single-seat spacecraft design available, 
trumped only by the RSI Aurora and Origin 300i. You'll always know you're in an anvil ship by the hard military industrial spec angles and lines. Anvil is THE military provider. Many of the ships include a circular motif of some sort up top that lets you know you're looking at an anvil, whether it be a turret, a scanner, or an EMP. And on the interior, you'll know you're in an anvil ship when you see a sort of hexagonal shapes formed by 30 and 60 degree angles everywhere. The hallways, the doors, some exterior surfaces, even on the edges of the touchscreens, you'll find these angles. It gives off a strong and structural look to the ships. You'll also notice a very cold and hot lighting scheme with reds and blues surrounded by deep shadow. This lighting scheme is noticeable across most ships as well. Anvil also has a couple of ships that use periscoping pilot seats that are pretty interesting and unique to the manufacturer. Just like Aegis, Anvil design tends to come off as non-frivolous, utilitarian, and militaristic. You may even be surprised to know they produce a ground-based mobile missile platform, but we're only looking at ships in these videos. All these points don't mean that they can't design some attractive and comfortable spaces. They also don't mean that the designs aren't nice to look at. In an Anvil cockpit, you'll always find yourself surrounded by high-tech, high-end touchscreens with bright lighting, full-color displays, and solid high-quality construction. And just walking around the ships, you'll notice brightly lit areas, high-grade materials, and the best names and components and weaponry. All of these things are purposeful in the Anvil brand to let you know you're getting top quality materials and services, unlike some other OEMs. With arguably one of the most recognizable design languages, Anvil is the cornerstone of the new age of space combat and superiority. It provides the very best in ships like the small scanning ship, the Terrapin, or for the more intense role for the bounty hunter, you also have the choice of the Hawk. Drop ships, small fighters, large fighters, missile platforms, exploration vessels, Anvil has a solution for any military need, save for the larger ships. But it's only a matter of time before we see an Anvil Capital Class ship. If you're a supporter of Terra's authority over Earth, you're a fighter, and you need to know that your butt is properly bolstered in the best seats this side of the Perry line, then Anvil has your back. That was the breakdown of just two of Star Citizen ship manufacturers. Definitely the two most military based, if that's what you're looking for. But remember, there are eight other major manufacturers that I will be covering for you. So keep an eye out for those videos as well, as the manufacturers only get more varied from here. Thanks again for checking out this video, and my channel as a whole. If you'd like to discuss more of the lore of the verse, or talk about other upcoming videos, check out my Discord server, linked in the video description. And consider subscribing to Space Tomato to keep up with all of my Star Citizen coverage.